Pfizer joins us now. Dr. Dolston, thank you for being with us this morning. Tell us about these data. They're early. They're from the first human trial uh, that you and BioNTech are doing together on this vaccine. But uh, hearing from experts in the field, they look promising. How do you assess uh, how they look in terms of getting a successful vaccine for COVID? Yeah. Hi, Meg. Great to speak to you again. Well, this is the first data for, from a unique vaccine program that in, in a, you know, just some four months have moved to generate clinical experience that shows reason to be encouraged. It, the preliminary data from the study shows that we can administrate our uh, vaccine at a low effective dose. It's well tolerated and it provides neutralizing titers uh, reported to be above what you see in plasma from patients that recover from infection. As early do we record it as four weeks after starting the vaccinations. Local reaction where you inject the patients or systemic events of immunization with the 10 or 30 microgram of the low dose are tolerable, generally mild to moderate and transient. No serious adverse events were reported. So we are obviously very encouraged by this good experience in humans, and we feel great to be able also to post today a manuscript on an open public source that allow other scientists in the world to review our data, and at the same time, we submit it for publication. Well, I want to ask you about those levels of the neutralizing antibodies seen in this study. One of the things that your team and BioNTech's uh, note in that manuscript posted online is that we don't know yet what level of these neutralizing antibodies are needed to protect uh, against the coronavirus. So as you look ahead to the phase three trial, what are you expecting this vaccine potentially to see based on the data uh, that you've seen so far? How protective do you think it will be? You know, that's, of course, a key question, Meg. And as we stated, we are, you know, moving rapidly in an area where we constantly learn together. And obviously, we share constantly our experience with the US FDA. Well, I am uh, and believe that this is very encouraging. Compared to convalescent serum, we were... Uh, 1.8 times with a 10 microgram and 2.8 times higher with a 30 microgram. So we were higher than what was seen with the convalescent plasma. And that's for neutralizing activity. And if you look to antibody levels, we were eight times with a 10 microgram and 46 times higher with a 30 microgram. So I, I'm quite optimistic that this reflects the ballpark where you want to be to have a chance to deliver effective activity of a vaccine. We do know that from coronaviruses, uh, convalescent plasma transfusion has shown activity if they're delivered early in disease. So of course, if you can raise those antibody levels that we discuss even before the disease, it, it makes me believe that this is really encouraging for us. And finally, I wanted to say the mRNA platform that we are using also deliver activation in general of T cells that we have seen with previous vaccines. And we're just now recording that for this vaccine and we'll share uh, shortly. So I think there could be more mechanisms operating in favor of the vaccine than what you see with convalescent plasma. So while this is early observations and before you can be absolute confident in uh, the direction for what we're hoping to be uh, a phase three going into a large data set that could be the foundation for an emergency use authorization in the fall and a potential approval shortly thereafter. There are, of course, hurdles that we need to pass and more data that we need to generate. But I am optimistic and believe that we're onto something that is a very promising new vaccine. Did I hear there's a question from the studio? 